Hey guys, welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this basic yet advanced portal door. So what's going to happen is you're going to walk into one of these doors and it'll teleport you out at the other portal that you set. So you'll have an entrance and an exit. So now this is made in just one blueprint. So we have all these different doors here, but this is just one blueprint. So let me show you what this is going to look like. So as you can see here, we have this blue portal. If I go into this, it's going to take me to this other blue portal. If I go back in it, it's going to take me to the other side. If I go into this red portal, it will take me to the other red portal. And again, if I go in it, it will keep working like so. If I go into this green one, it will take me over here to this green one. So you can see that this all works perfectly. We have all the different teleport portals set up. So we teleport from each one perfectly how we'd want to, how we'd expect to. Also with a sound effect, as you can tell. And like I say, this is all done in one simple blueprint. And we can also change the color of each door how we want like so very easily like that. So let me delete all this code and I'll show you how I've done this. So what we want to do first is we want to create this blueprint. So I'm already in this folder that I've created for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, go to blueprint class, and I'm gonna create an actor. I'm gonna name this one portal BP. You can name this absolutely whatever you want. And we'll open it up straight away like so. In here, we want to add two static meshes. So the first one, so we're gonna add component. First one, we're gonna add static mesh. I'm just going to name this one portal like so. The static mesh I'm going to simply just set to be a cube like that. Move it out like that. And so this is just the shape of my portal door. So I'm just going to shape this to be whatever I like. Like that. I think that would be good for me. Customize this to get whatever you like. And I might actually also set up something in a minute so we can change this dynamically for each portal as well. Then we're going to add another component. And again, this is another static mesh. This one I'm just going to name exit reference like that and this is again going to be another cube this one I'm just going to scale down to be a lot smaller like that I'm just going to move this to be just in front of the door like so so you can put this wherever you like but this is essentially the location you want the player to exit so when the player exits the portal they'll be spawned here put this wherever you like and again I'll set up something in a minute so we can move this around for each portal so this current location doesn't matter too much what does matter though, is we need to disable the collision. So with it selected, scroll down the right, untick generate overlap events. Can character step up on no, and the collision presets are gonna be no collision. Scroll down again, and we're gonna tick hidden in game and untick cast shadow, meaning that as far as the player is aware, this doesn't exist, so they can't see it, they can't collide with it, it doesn't have a shadow, none of that, meaning this is purely just for us to use as a reference of where we want the player to be spawning. Once you've done that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up changing the location of this and the scale of the door. So to do that, we're gonna go into the construction script here, and we're just gonna drag a reference to the portal static mesh here. So we're gonna change the size of the door first. So we'll drag out of that, and we're going to set, let's do transform. So we'll set transform. Actually, we'll set relative transform, sorry. And the reason I'm doing transform is so that we can then do location, rotation, and scale all together. So set relative transform like that. That's rotation, sorry. So drag out this, set relative transform like that. With a new transform, we're going to right click, promote to variable, and I'm going to call this one portal transform, like so. Now I'm going to compile to set the default values before connecting this. So then if I select the portal static mesh here, I'm just going to get the transform here and put it into this portal transform variable that we've just made so that it will be this by default that we've already set. So it's 000, zero on the location, rotation also 000, zero, zero. the scale we can just right click, copy, select the variable, leave the location and rotation as they are, right click on the scale and hit paste. And now we have that set up like so, and we can connect that like that. Now to make this so you can change it for each individual one, what we want to do is we want to select this portal transform again, and we just want to tick instance editable or tick this little eye down here. And this means we can then change it. We compile and save that. Now to actually change where the exit is gonna be, it's a very similar process. We're just gonna drag and drop the exit reference in there and set relative location like so. Again, not plugging it in just yet. New location, we're going to right click, promote to variable, and call this exit location. Plugging that in there like so. Again, the default value I'm going to set to be what I have it as now. So for me, I've got it like this. So we'll leave the scale as it is, as we, as we don't need to change that. Rotation, you also don't need to change, but obviously you can if you want. You can also just get the transform or rotation as well. But I'm just doing the location. So I'll right click, copy the location, compile so I can change it and then paste location on there like so. Plug that in and now we can change that as well. 
if again we tick instance editable. Compile and save that. And now that should work perfectly. We'll come back here later on to do the colors, but I won't bother with that at the moment. I'll do that as the final step. So now once we've set that up, I'll just actually comment this. So I'll do set portal and exit locations like that. Compile and I'll go over to the event graph here. Once we're here, we want to create two more variables. So I'm going to hit the plus variable again. I'm going to create one called a portal index. And I'm going to make this one an integer. And this is going to basically allow you to decide which portal belongs to which. So if you have portal one, you're going to have two for that. So you have portal one and portal one that then links those together. You'll have portal two and portal two that links those together. So this is just so we can link the entrance and exit together. Then we're going to create another variable and I'm going to call this one entrance question mark like so and this one is going to be a boolean like that so it's a true or false so basically if this is the entrance to the portal it doesn't matter which one the entrance is you just need to make sure that one of them is and one of them isn't so that we can then go to the opposite one but again it doesn't matter which one's which again we're going to tick the eyes next to these to make them instance editable like that so you can change these for each one after this we're going to delete these three nodes here and then we're going to right click and we're going to get event hit so this is basically just when the player walks into the door. Now you can do this differently. So you can do it with an E key or anything like that. I have different videos on those for different doors, which I'll leave linked on screen now and probably in the description as well. But for this, I'm just doing it so you walk into the door. So from event hit here, we're gonna come out of other. And we're going to cast to our character. So for me, that's the third person character, but for you, this could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. So basically this means if it is our player character, that is colliding with this, so it's hitting it, then it will do this. If it's something else, it won't bother. After this, we're going to play sound 2D. This is just gonna play the sound effect. For this, I'm just gonna use the teleport committed that we have by default in the game engine, like so. You can obviously use your own ones. Here, you can also play a particle, so you can go play or spawn, sorry, spawn emitter at location or at attached anything like that as well if you want if you want like a puff of smoke or something i'm not going to bother with that i just want the sound like so but that's how you do that after this we want to see if this is an entrance portal or not so we're going to hold down b left click to get a branch plugging that in there like so the condition of this being the entrance boolean that we've just made from true we want to basically find the other portal and go to that so this is the entrance we want to find the exit so off of true what we're going to do is going to get all actors of class with the actor class as our portal BP that we're just making now. So it's gonna get every single portal that we have in the level, and it's gonna find the right one that we want to teleport to. The out axis of this, we're going to get a for each loop with break, with the execution going into the castle active class execution like so. We'll move that out a bit. The array element, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get portal index. So we're gonna see which one it is, so we're gonna link them together. And then we're going to get the portal index of this one as well. So drag and drop our get portal index there. Out of the top one, we're just going to get an equal equal integer, plugging that in there. So basically saying if the portal we're looking at has the same index as the door we are trying to teleport from, then it will do what we want. As obviously we want to make sure that they are linked together and they are the same. So if this is true, what we want to do is we want to come out of this and we want to get an and boolean because we want to make sure they're linked, but we also want to make sure that the one we are currently looking at isn't the same one we're at now. So what it could happen is this could be the same one we're coming from, meaning it will just teleport you to where you are. So to fix that, we're gonna see if this one isn't an entrance. So this is an entrance, as you can see here. So we're gonna see if the other one isn't, meaning we're gonna to go to the opposite one. So to do that, what we're gonna do is out of the array element again, we're going to get entrance like so. And out of this, we're going to get a not Boolean. So if this is not an entrance, plugging that into the and there like so. So if they are both of the same index and this one isn't an entrance, then it's gonna do what we want. So we'll go into a branch, so hold down B, left click, the condition of that and there, plugging this into the loop body. So every time it fires off, it's gonna check every single door BP, doing this in the loop body out of true. So once it finds the correct door that we want to teleport to, we'll go into the break of the loop, meaning that it's then no longer going to be checking each door. You can double click these white execution lines to get these root nodes here to keep it more organized. So again, like I say, if the one we are going from is an entrance, it's gonna check every door to make sure it's the same portal door type that we need and to make sure it's not an entrance. If it is, it's then found the correct portal we want to go to. If we found the correct one, what we want to do is we simply just want to move the player there. So we're going to come out of this cast at the very start here. So as third person character, we're going to set actor 
location. So set actor location like so. Plugging out to the completed of the for each loop there. Target again is obviously self. And the new location, what we want to do is we want to come out of the array element again of this for each loop. We want to get our exit reference. So all the way down the bottom, get exit reference. Out of that, we're going to get world location, plugging that into the location there. So it's going to get a location of the exit reference that we have. So that's where we set the player to leave. And it's going to move the player to there. So it's going to check to see if it finds the right door. Once it does find the right door, it's going to move the player there. So that will work perfectly. But as you can see, that's only going to work to see if the door we're going from is an entrance. If it isn't an entrance, we basically want to do the opposite of this. So do the same thing, but find one which is an entrance. So this is very simple to do. What we can do is we can just duplicate this. So we can just select all that, Control C, Control V to duplicate it down here, plugging this into the false of this branch instead. So if it isn't an entrance, it will do this. Keeping all this the same, except here. So actually we're going to move this target entrance down and disconnect it from the knot by alt left click then we're going to get a reference to our entrance so get entrance there plugging that into the knot like so that knot is going to go into another and boolean so come out that and get an and boolean like so plugging that into this target entrance there and that and will go into the other and that we already have so this is checking quite a bit but that's how that works so what's going to happen is it's going to check to see again if we're looking at the right door index if we are, we're going to make sure that the one we're in is not an entrance and the one we are checking for is an entrance. And then if both of those are true and this one is true, it will then do what we want again and go into the correct door. So let me run you through this again as this is working now. This is it done. So if we walk into the portal, it's going to play the sound. If the portal we're at is an entrance, it's going to check every single reference of the portal door we have. If the portal index is correct, so they are linked, and the one we are checking is not an entrance, it will then teleport the player there. If it is an entrance or if they're not linked, it will continue checking. If the one we are going from isn't an entrance, it's going to again check all the doors, or the portal, sorry. If they are linked, then that's good. It will go into this and. So if they are linked and this one we are in is not an entrance and the one we are checking is an entrance, then it will do what we want. So that's quite a few ands there. Obviously, we just need to double check to make sure because if we don't have these here, then it can just teleport to the one we are currently at, which obviously we do not want. And again, it will just move the player there. So this is the basic teleporting part done. So we're going to compile and save that. And then the final step is we want to make the material. But let me just show you what this is going to do first. So I can put this in here. So let me just put one in this corner, move it up like so. Let me rotate it around like that so then we have the exit there so you can see here we have the portal transformation exit location portal index and entrance so you can change the location and size of this portal here i'm not going to bother with that we can change the exit location so we can change where the player is going to exit the portal from which is obviously all good so we can customize that to be how we want so i'm going to put it like that and the portal index, I'm going to leave this one to be zero as it's the first one we have. And I'm going to make this one so it is an entrance. So I'm going to tick that like so. And if I tick this here, I can move that. I'm going to hold Alt and left click to drag this out to duplicate it, rotate it round. And then what I'm going to do is just keep the portal index as zero, untick entrance. Now we should see that if I hit play, I walk into this one, it should teleport me to the other one. So you can see that worked perfectly. If I go back into this, that didn't work. So why did that not work? I know exactly why we didn't connect it properly. So what that did is it moved this location. So when we duplicated it, this set act location got disconnected. We're just going to take the target and put it into the as third person character there from the cast. Now this should work a lot better. If we hit play again, we should see we walk into this, it will teleport us over there. If we walk into this, it will teleport us back over here. And this works perfectly like so. It will even work if we get more portals in here. So I get another one in like so. Again, I'm going to make this one portal index 1 at this time, make this one an entrance, and then I'll drag this out to duplicate it, and again, leave this as portal index of 1 this time, so they are linked, and make this one not an, ent an entrance, hit play. If I go in here, I'm going to go to this first one, if I go back here, I'll go to this one, so you see that's working. Now if I go down here, so this new one we just placed in, this should take us over here, like so, back, like that, so that works perfectly. Now there's one thing which isn't perfect over here, and that's the materials. They all look the exact same, so the player's not going to know which goes where. So how are we going to do that? We're going to make a dynamic material. And this is very easy to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click, 
I'm going to create a new material and I'm going to call this one portal mat like so and we're going to open it up straight away. In here we're going to hold down 3 and left click to get a constant 3 vector. I'm going to right click that arrow there and convert to parameter meaning this is editable and we can change the color dynamically. I'm going to name this one color. Now make sure you take note of what you've named this as we need to use this name exactly how it's spelt now later on. I'm going to plug that into the base color. Here you can set a default value or something if you want. For example white, so I'll do that. Doesn't matter, you don't need to do that. Hit apply and once you've done that you can close it as that's all we need to do in there. Apply, save, close that. Then let's make this into an instance. So back in the content browser here we're going to right click it, create material instance and that's done. That's all we need to do with that. And we'll go back into our portal BP here and back into the construction script here where we are setting the transform and location of the door and exit. Out of the exit what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another reference to the portal up here so you can just use this one but I'm going to do it again to keep it organized. Drag out of that and I'm going to create a dynamic material instance like so and I won't plug that in there just yet. The element index you can leave as zero or basically this is just the element index of your material. So I want to change element zero so I'll leave it at zero. If you have more than one material in here set it to the correct element. The source material we want to have as our portal mat ints that we just created. So mine's portal mat ints there. Optional name, I'm going to leave as none. You don't need to change that. Out of the return value of this, we want to set vector parameter value with the parameter name as what we just named it. So like I say, I named mine color, spelt exactly like that. You do it for whatever you named it. So we're going to be changing that vector parameter that we've just made. I'm going to right click the value here hit promote to variable and I'm going to name this color as well and again hit the little eye there or tick instance editable so that the player also you sorry can then change the color of each door to how you want or each portal sorry the compile you can leave that as default black or white whatever you like I'll set it to white just because why not and then again we're going to come out of the portal up here and we're going to set material like so set material plugging that in there and the element index is again the same as the element index on the create material and then the material will be the return value of that create there. We can plug this in like so and now we've set it up so we have a dynamic material on here as well so we can change the color of each individual portal door. So I'm going to select hit C to comment this again and I'm just going to name this one set portal color like so. Now if we compile and save we should be all done with our code. So I'm going to close that and now we can change the color. So this one you see it's white now. I'm going to select this I'm going to change this one to be a nice blue like that and then this one is the same one which is linked together so I'll make this one blue as well. This one I'm going to make a nice red color so then I'll change this one to be red as well as these are the two which are linked. And then I'll add one more portal in here just to show it off again just to show that it still works completely perfectly like so. I'll make this one yellow set the portal index to 2 make this one an entrance and that works like that and then I'll duplicate this out, maybe move it over here this time. Not an entrance, keep it at portal 2 and keep the color as yellow. Hit play and I think that'll be it for this video. So like I say, I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've created a portal system in which we can have as many portals as we want all in one blueprint. We can change the color of them, change the size of them, change the location of where you exit, all that good stuff and we have sound effects and I've shown you how to add particles as well. So you can see if we walk into here, it's going to teleport us over to the other blue one. If I go back in here, it teleport us back here. If I go into the yellow one, it teleport us to the yellow one. If I go into the yellow, teleport back there. If I go into the red, it will teleport us to the red. And this works perfectly like so. And then again, I'll show you with the blue as well. If I go in the blue, it teleports us over here like so. So that works perfectly. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.